God bless you. My name is Pastor Harris Kukalides, and you're watching here in the program, Getting to Know Jesus. And today we're going to talk about original sin and total depravity of man. And what is the meaning of original sin? According to Christian theology, the condition of sin that marks all human beings as a result of Adam's first act of disobedience. This is what American Heritage Dictionary states. Original sin is the effects of Adam's fall. And that effect, is, besides being called original sin, it also is the reason that man is total depraved, is depraved by nature. Look at what Psalms 51 verse 5 states. Behold, I was brought forth in antiquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. This is all result because of Adam's sin. Let's go to Psalms 58, verse 3, it states. The wicked are strangled from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. As soon as they are born, they speak lies. That's not just the... That's, you might say, well, that's talking about the wicked. I'm a just person. Well, that's talking about you. We are wicked without the Lord Jesus Christ. We are evil. Every person has gone astray. Let's go to Romans chapter 3, verses 10. It's quoting the Septuagint of chapter 13 of Psalms. Um, and look at what it states. Verses 10 through 18. This gives us the condition of man. It says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. Before I continue, you might say, Well, I'm seeking after God. I'm hearing this sermon, and I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Or, well, you're only seeking after God because God brought you to seek after Him. Because you couldn't seek Him on your own. Look at what John 6.44 states. No one can come to me. This is Jesus speaking. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up at the last day. John 6.65 says, And he said, Therefore I said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. That's why Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4 says, Draw me away. The daughters of Jerusalem, we will run after you. The Shumanite, the king, has brought me into his chambers. But notice that Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verses 4 says, Draw me away, because on your own, you won't go to Christ. You won't want nothing to do with Christ. We're incapable of coming to God in our depravity. But as I was reading in Romans chapter 3, it says, verses, let's read verses 12. They have all turned aside. They, they have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That is the condition of man. But you might say, well, man was created in God's image. So he's capable of doing good. Well, we read in Genesis 1 verses 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. This is Genesis 1, 26. But have you ever read Genesis 5, verses 1 to 3? 
speaking about the creation when Adam was created, but then in verse 3, we see Adam having a son in his own image, not in God's image. And what image is that? His fallen nature image. Let's read Genesis 5, verses 1 to 3. It says, This is the book of the genealogy of Adam in the day that God created man. He made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. That's verses 1 and 2. We see man created in his image. But when we go to verse 3, a scary image. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his own, after his image and named him Seth. Notice that it's not the image of God there. It's the image of man. Let's go to Romans 5, verses 18 and 19. It says, Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. There you see a comparison between Adam and Jesus. By Adam, everyone is fallen. By Jesus, everyone is righteous. That comes to Jesus. Now, man is unable to do anything good. That's the nature of man. He's so depraved, he is unable to do anything good. Genesis 6, 5 states, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. You might say, well, this is before the, the flood. That's why God had to drown everyone in Noah's times. Well, this is also the condition after the flood. If you go to Genesis 8, 21, it says, and the Lord smelled a smoothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have. So I want, to know, I want you to notice that the condition of man stood the same even after the flood. Let's go to Job chapter 15. Verses 14 to 16. It says, What is man that he could be pure? And he who is born of a woman that he could be righteous? If God puts no trust in his saints, and the heavens are not pure in his sight, how much less man who is abominable and filthy, who drinks iniquity like water, What's the condition of man? He drinks antiquity. He drinks sin as it were water. That's the condition of every person living. As Proverbs 19.28 says, And the mouth of the wicked devours antiquity. They drink it like it was water, like, like they're thirsty. And Psalms 53 verse 3 says, Every one of them has turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good, no, not one. Same thing with Psalms 14, verse 3 states the same thing. So I just want you to notice the condition of man is not a pretty sight. Let's go to Proverbs 20, verse 9. Who can say, I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. <clears throat> can you name someone like that? Ezekiel 7 verse 20 says, For there is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. Everyone has fallen and is fallen. They're incapable of believing in God in their condition as well. We read already John 6 44 and John 6 65. Let's go to John 
843. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. And look what Jesus says. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. That's the condition of man. They don't want to believe God's word. Let's continue. John 10 verse 26. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep as I said to you. Let's go to John 12, verse 37. But though he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe in him. That the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Lord, who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because Isaiah said again, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. I want you to notice the condition of man. He's incapable of believing. He's incapable of understanding truth. John fourteen seventeen tells us. Look what it says. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Jesus speaking to his disciples that when the Holy Spirit comes, <clears throat> they'll be able to understand truth. Because if, if, if you're not disciples of Jesus, if you're not serving Jesus, you don't understand no truth. Things that I'm speaking to you, you don't understand what I'm saying to you. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man, the animal man, the man who, who lets himself go by his nature, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. That's the condition of man. He's unable to understand the truth. As we read in Romans 3, verses 10 and 11, he's unable to seek God. He cannot seek God. Romans 3, verses 10 and 11. There is none that seeks him. No, not one. He is dead in his sins. Ephesians 2, verses 1 to 3 tells us. He's dead. He's spiritually dead. God needs to give them spiritual life. That's why Ephesians 2, verse 1 says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. And then we read verse 4, even though I read um, 1 to 3, I want to read a little bit more, I read 4 and 5. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Man is dead spiritually. He needs life. Examples of this, you can see this in Genesis 2, verses 16 and 17. John 3, verses 5 through 7. Colossians 2, verses 13. Just quoting you a little bit, so I won't have to mention those verses. You can read them in your own timing. A <clears throat> man is blind and corrupt in his heart. He is blind. Let's go Mark 7, verse 21 to 23. 
From within, out of the heart of men, perceive evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. That's the condition of man. Read Jeremiah 17 verses 9, Ezekiel 9 verses 3, Genesis verses 8. Chapter 8, verses 21, Genesis 6, verses 5. All these verses will tell you of your blindness. John 3, verses 19 to 21, Romans 8, verses 7 through 8, Ephesians 4, verses 17 to 19, and Ephesians 5, verses 8. Let's read Ephesians 5, verses 8. It states, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children in the light. You wasn't you were once darkness. You weren't in darkness. You were once darkness. Read that in the New King James. You were once darkness. Let's see what other translation says. You were, the NIV states the same. You were once darkness. Not that you were in darkness. But you were once darkness itself. That's Ephesians 5 verses 8. It doesn't say that you were once in darkness. And now you are in the light. No, it says for you were once darkness. But now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. You were once darkness. That's the condition of man without Christ. Man in his condition, in his depravity... He's captive to sin and Satan. I'm going to quote these verses. <clears throat> As I said before, he is captive to sin and Satan. John 8, verse 34. John 8, 44. John 6, verse 20. 2 Timothy 2, verses 25 to 26. Titus 3, verse 3. And 1 John 5, verses 19. Let's read 1 John 5, verses 19. And we know that we are God's children, and that the whole world lies under the power of the evil one. Okay. And also, man, in his depravity, he performs actions freely according to his nature. And his nature is wholly evil, is totally evil. Read this in Job 14, verse 4. Matthew 7, verses 16 to 18. Matthew 12, verses 33. Let's read Matthew 12, verse 33. Either make the tree good and its fruits good, or make the tree bad and its fruits bad. For the tree is known by its fruits. 